So think with me for a minute, and I just wonder if, if you've ever found yourself in a busy spot, right, in, in, a, in a crowd full of people, and, and you found yourself just sort of sitting there, looking around and, and watching the people as they moved around you, right? It, it's people watching. I think that we've all done something sort of like that at some point, and it, as we do, right, we, we know and we learn there's some interesting people out there, right? We, went, we might people watch at an airport, or at a food court. We might people watch it at Astros games. There's always some entertaining people there. Honestly, I hope we watch them hit the ball a little bit better tonight, right? But if you're not aware, right, with people watching, it can be a very productive thing, right? When we watch people, we learn from them, right? They have life experiences that we might not have yet that take them to a place, and, and when we watch, we, we can learn from them, and we can get on their level as well, right? A, a really easy example of that, we're traveling with the kids a few years ago, they moved slow through the airport, I like to move fast through the airport, and I saw this guy, right, about my age, with kids about the same age, and he was rolling his stand-up suitcase through the airport, right? It's a stand-up thing, he's rolling it along, but he had taken his kid and put him on top of the suitcase. And the kid was holding onto the handle like he was riding a horse, and he rolled through the airport. And without hesitating, I grabbed Will and threw him on that suitcase, and we doubled, right, our, our speed as we were able to walk through, right? It was a game changer for me because I watched someone, learned from them, and then began to do what they did. And, and that's what we have the opportunity to do this morning. We're going to look at two men in the Bible. So if you've got a Bible, open up to Acts chapter 8. We're going to be in Acts chapter 8, and as we look at these men, we're going to see some things about them. We're going to see how they live. We're going to see how they act. We're going to see how they respond to different things. And here's the prayer, right? As we get into the Word together, it's that we would watch these people and that we would respond to God the way that they respond to God, right? And I'm going to tell you right now up front that, that one of these guys, he responds to Jesus, he hears the truth about Jesus, he trusts in Jesus, and he gets baptized. And this morning, I'm going to invite you to do something that, that we don't typically do on a Sunday morning. I'm going to invite you, if you've never taken that step to follow Jesus in baptism before, I'm going to invite you to do that this morning. Lewis mentioned we've got several people already signed up to be baptized. And as we read through God's Word this morning, here's what we're going to see. We're going to see how important it is and our walk with Christ. And so if that's you, and you're thinking, oh man, I think he might be talking to me right now. Well, I am talking to you right now, right? Begin praying, right? And ask God how he would have you respond to his word this morning, right? We're in Acts chapter 8. We're going to watch, and we're going to learn. Remember where we're at in the timeline of the book of Acts. The church has been persecuted. The believers have scattered out of Jerusalem. So now we've got all these believers moving to, to all of the different parts of the world back then. And as they do, they share the gospel with people where they end up, right? God takes them. He moves them wherever God moves them. These people seem to keep sharing the gospel. It's this continuous cycle. And there's a guy named Philip. And Philip ends up in a city called Samaria, right? That's where God sent him. And that city, the entire city, is changed by the good news of Jesus, right? You can look at the beginning of Acts chapter 8. A lot of stuff is happening there because people are trusting in Christ. And, and in Acts 8, we see that, that there's much joy in the city of Samaria. And so think about what that would have meant for Philip himself. Philip was a believer in Jerusalem. The Jerusalem church is being arrested. They're being beaten. They're being thrown in prison. It's not a good place to be a believer. So he runs. He takes off. And so he's gone from this high-stress situation in that city to now the city of Samaria that's been changed by the good news of the gospel to a place that's described as a place that is full of joy, right? He, he is in his sweet spot, absolutely loving where God has him, right? But here's the thing. Well, I'm sure he was thankful for it. That didn't last forever for him. Look down at verse 26. Acts chapter 8, we're going to start in verse 26. He's in the spot of joy, a peaceful spa uh, space, and it says, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place, and Philip rose and he went. If we're going to people watch this morning, Right, if we're going to watch Philip and learn from Philip, the first thing that we need to be willing to do is this. We need to follow God where God leads. That's point number one. Follow God where he leads. Philip immediately, right? He, he rose and he went to the desert place. From this place of great joy 
to the desert, right? A lot of people said it's the, the last rest stop on the road before you get to the desert. And he was willing to do that because God told him to go, right? He was willing to do that because God asked him to be there. And, and here's the thing. God doesn't tell him what's going to happen when he's there or who's waiting or any of that. Philip just, just, he didn't need that. All he needed was to hear from God and he went, right? We're gonna, we need to follow God where he leads us. And, and here's the incredible thing. Right? This situation is not unique to Philip. Right? We, we see it all through the Bible and even today. Right? God is in the business of sending his children. That's me and you. If we've trusted Christ, God is in the business of sending us out where he needs us. Right? When God calls, we must be obedient. I've said this phrase to my kids over and over again. You probably have heard it. Delayed obedience is what? Disobedience. Right? Delayed obedience is disobedience. It just doesn't work. When we don't do the right thing, when we know we're supposed to do it, we find ourselves in trouble, right? I've lived that out. I'm sure that you have lived that out. Not too long ago, my registration on my car was expired, right? I knew what I needed to do. My wife was lovingly reminding me um, often and frequently to take care of that and to get that done, and I didn't do it. And one day, she took my car to go get the kids from school, and you know what happens, right? Well, she gets pulled over, of course, because of that. And she tries to explain to the police officer, listen, I promise this is my husband's car. I've been telling him he needs to do this. It didn't matter. She got a ticket. And as he's handing her the ticket, he says, man, I would hate to be your husband when you get home. It's like he knew what was going to happen when she got home. Here's the thing, right? I, I just didn't do it. Right? I didn't take care of what I needed to take care of. Delayed obedience is disobedience. It gets us in trouble. We know the right thing to do. We need to do it when we know it, right? When God calls, we have to follow him. And so as you're thinking about this this morning, hearing me say, follow God, you might be thinking, okay, where do I go? Here's the thing. Following God isn't, isn't always to a specific location, right? It's just responding to God when he speaks. And through the Bible, he's spoken to us. Right? He, he's told each and every one of us a, a lot of things that, that he wants us to do as we follow after him. Right? We, we know that, that people ask Jesus, Jesus, what do we do? How do we live? What are we supposed to, to be like in this life? And Jesus said, listen, above all else, the first and greatest commandment is to love God with all you got. Love God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And, and then he goes on to say, Lewis said it in the welcome today, he goes on to say, listen, the second thing is to love your neighbor as yourself. Listen, we know God has called us to follow him and loving God. We know that God has called us to follow him and loving our neighbor as ourselves. Listen, these aren't specific locations. This is just life, right? This is just how we live as followers of Christ. So, so let's be committed this morning to following the example we see in scripture and, and following Jesus in every area of our lives, right? No matter where he leads us. And yes, sometimes it, it is to a new location, and God's calling us out to a new spot. So we've got to follow God, like Philip. And we see when Philip follows God, he ran in to someone. Look down at verse 27 of Acts chapter 8. We see that as he goes where God called him to go, there was an Ethiopian, right, a eunuch, a court official, and he was returning from Jerusalem. And the Bible also tells us that this eunuch, he's sitting in the chariot, and he's reading Scripture from the book of Isaiah. Look at verse 29. It says, And the Spirit of God said to Philip, Go and join the chariot. And so Philip, again, he follows God. It says, So Philip ran, Philip follows God again to the chariot, and he hears this guy reading Isaiah. And he asked, Do you understand what you're reading? Look at verse 31. This guy said, How can I? Unless someone guides me or shows me. And he invited Philip to get up into the chariot and to sit with him. Right? As, as we people watch, we see that Philip followed God. And the second thing that we notice is this, is, is he engaged people. Right? That's the second thing that God is calling us to from his word this morning. We must be willing to engage people. Right? He, he sees what's happening in the chariot and he doesn't run away. He doesn't think this guy's good. He, he engaged. He put himself in the middle of what was going on. And for us, it doesn't matter where we go from here. We've got to be willing to engage people. Now, now I'm going to be honest with you. I, I missed this for a lot of, of my life up until now. Right? There's seasons where, where I tried not to engage people. When I was on campus at, at A&M and I had to walk across campus, there were all these people, they, they wanted to talk and stop and chat with you in the middle of the commons area there. And so there were times, don't judge me for this, but there were times I would get my phone out 
And I would just walk through like this. There wouldn't be anybody there. But if I had my phone out, nobody would talk to me, and I would not have to engage. Listen, that's wrong. Right? I missed so many opportunities to talk to people. we got to be willing to engage where God places us. Work, school, home. Listen, our trash cans blew all down the street this week. Yours did too, right, because of that wind, right? Listen, we had a great opportunity to engage neighbors picking their stuff up out of our yard. Listen, wherever God places you, don't look the other way. Don't be too busy. Don't be stuck in your routine. Be willing to break away from what's going on and engage people. Philip did, and, and here's the incredible thing, right? We see in Acts 8, as he engages, he was even willing to get in the chariot. Now, I want to drill down on this for a second. He got into the chariot with someone he didn't know. He got into the chariot with someone from another country, a different background, someone that didn't look like him. He got into a chariot that was moving, right? It was moving away from his home. It was moving away from everything that he was comfortable with. And he was willing to do so because he wanted to see this man come to know Jesus. Listen, as I read that and I think about getting in the chariot and going away from what's comfortable, away from what's known, that has a huge impact on me. Guys, we are called to love people like this, right? Our love should drive us to, to engage people, to, to be uncomfortable for their sake so they could come to know Christ. And, and hear me, listen, I know that some people in here are thinking this morning, man, I can't do that. Or you're thinking, man, I'm, I'm an introvert, right? I'm not a people person. It's hard for me to talk to people. Or maybe some people are even thinking, listen, I don't even like people, right? I've got enough friends. I don't need any more friends. I can't keep up with it. Listen, let me just say that, that those things are not okay, right? That's not okay as believers, right? Even when we're uncomfortable, we're called to obey, right? We're called to engage people, right? Philip got into the chariot, and for, for some of us this morning, maybe a lot of us this morning, as we read this and as we see this, God's saying, man, it's time to get in the chariot, right? It, it's time to be willing to get out of your comfort zone a little bit. It's time to talk to someone you don't normally talk to. It's time to have conversations that you've been putting off for a while. God's calling us, asking us to engage people. And, and as I read this, as I think about him in that chariot going away from what's known, going away from what's comfortable, I can't help but ask this question, right? What, what am I willing to do to see someone else come to know Jesus? Same thing for you. Just think about that for a minute. What are you willing to do to see someone else trust Christ? What are you willing to do to see someone who, whose sin has them separated from God? that they don't have a relationship with God the Father, what are you willing to do to see them come to know Christ? And as we think about it, if we're honest, sometimes, maybe, maybe a lot of the time, right, the, the natural tendency that, that we have, right, that's inside of us is to push back a little bit. It's to retreat backwards to what's comfortable, to the things that we've always known, to the things that we know are going to be safe, to the things that we know are going to be Okay, listen, guys, don't let fear, don't let uncertainty or, or comfort keep you from intentionally living your life for the glory of God, right? We're, we're people watching, right? Look, look at Philip, right? He, he goes where God told, told him to go. He engaged the person that God had waiting for him there. And here's what we, we see him do as he engages. This is our third point. He shares Jesus, right? Right? Follow God, engage people, share Jesus. It's a very simple recipe or formula that we see in Philip's life here. He gets into the chariot. They read Isaiah together. And if you look at verse 32, you see that, that this guy in the chariot, he's reading this key verse from the book of Isaiah, right? An Old Testament book in our Bible. And these verses that he's reading are pointing him directly to Jesus. And, and he doesn't know that yet. And so he asks Philip, he's, who in the world is this talking about? And Philip, it says, look down at, at verse 35. It says, Philip opened his mouth, and he began with this scripture here, and he told the man the good news about Jesus. Listen, right? This is a novel concept, right? Philip opened his mouth, right? He, he spoke, right? He engaged, and, and as he opened his mouth, Jesus comes out of his mouth. And right there, he began to share with him everything that he knew about Jesus, all of the good about Jesus. And, and it says the good news about Jesus. Just think about what that is. 
right? We know that the gospel is the good news, that it changes everything. It's the good news that moves us from death to life. The good news is that through Jesus and his death on the cross, who took the punishment for our sins, we can trust in him now and have salvation, eternal life, sins forgiven. I mean, it's great news, and he shared that with the man in the chariot. And in the same way, guys, we need to share that in whatever chariot God puts us in throughout the week. I just want you to look around the room and think for a minute about who would hear about Jesus if we were willing to engage and share just like that, right? Listen, I I would imagine that our church family, right, encounters tens of thousands of people every single week, wherever God places us. Some of us go to school here. Some of us work here. Most or all of us live here. God has some of us travel across the United States. Some of us travel across the world. Listen, we encounter tens of thousands of people every single week. Let's make sure that we are sharing Jesus like we see here in the Word of God, right? That's the pattern we see with Philip. He follows God, he engages people, and then he shares Jesus. And and now, right, let's shift a little bit. We've seen it from Philip's perspective. Now let's look at at this Ethiopian court official. And here's what we learn about him. When we first encounter him, we see something that's super important for us. The first thing that we see or that we can learn from him is is simply this, is guys, we've got to seek truth. Right? We have to seek out the truth. This guy was seeking the truth. He had gone to Jerusalem to worship. He had a scroll opened to Isaiah. Right? He was in search of truth. He's in search of meaning. And here's the thing. He didn't have it yet. Right? We know that because he tells Philip, I don't understand this. I don't know what's going on. That's why he pulled Philip up into the chariot with him. Right? He was seeking, but he had not yet found it. And I wonder... If there's a lot, a lot of people that, that we run into in our daily lives that are seeking the truth right now, I, I wonder if maybe there's some people in here this morning that are in search of truth. Or maybe you're just a little bit unsettled. You, you've had this nagging feeling in your heart, the, this nagging feeling in the back of your head that there's some, something more for you, there's something greater out there, and, and you just haven't found it yet. And if that's you, if if you're people watching with us this morning, if if you're intent on the word of God, trying to learn from what you see here, look at this guy, right? This is how that guy was feeling. And here's the thing. He he doesn't shrug it off. He doesn't say, you know what, I'm not sure what's going on here. uh, So I'm going to forget about it. No, he he doesn't do that, right? He, He continues to press in, in search of truth, right? He, he searches for truth about God, and he makes his journey to Jerusalem. He's reading the word of God. He asks somebody that's a little bit further along in their journey to explain it to him. He, he's not too proud. He, he's not too shy. He knows that there's no more important questions in our life to have answered than the truth about God in a relationship with God. So this morning, if you're seeking, if you're searching, if you're wondering, if you're hoping, listen, don't be too shy. Don't be too proud. Don't close off. Seek the truth this morning. And then as you hear the truth, do what this guy did. The second thing we learn from this Ethiopian is this, is he responded to the truth. When we seek the truth and encounter the truth, guys, the truth demands a response, right? We're either in or we're out. When we hear it, we've got to respond to the truth. This court official, he got out of his chariot a changed man. He simply was not the same because in his search of truth, he found Jesus. And we know that because of what he did next. He became a child of God. Philip told him the good news that by believing in Jesus, his sins would be forgiven. He'd be made right with God. He'd be in a relationship with God. He'd have the promise of heaven and eternal life. And, and when he did it, or when he heard it, he responded, right? He didn't walk away with it. And the Bible teaches that in that moment, his life was changed. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that when we do that, the old in our life is gone, the new has come. We're a new creation in Christ. John chapter 1, verse 12 says that when we respond to Jesus and believe in his name, that we become children of God, right? God does a work in us. So this morning, if you're here, because you were driving by and the car pulled you in, if you're here because someone invited you, if you're here and you've been coming for a long time in search of truth, let me point you to Jesus as the truth. I want to encourage you, like this man did, to trust in him as Savior. And, and then I love this. I want you to keep watching this guy. He, he didn't just respond to the truth and let it be this isolated pocket or moment in his life. He actually began to live it out, right? That's the third thing that, that we've got to do. We've got to live in the truth, right? Or, or walk the truth out in our lives. Look at verse 36. He, he begins to do it right there on the road. It says, as they were going along the road, they came to some water. 
And the eunuch said, see, there's water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, and Philip and the eunuch, and Philip was able to baptize him right there, right? So, so right away, this guy is baptized. He, he took what a lot of people call the first step of obedience after we become a follower of Jesus. And here's the thing, right? There, there's no way he planned on it. Right? There's no way he planned on it that day. It wouldn't have made sense because he was not a follower of Christ. But in that chariot for him, everything changed. He trusted Christ. He became a new creation, a child of God, and he began to walk it out. And there's some in here right, that might not have been planned on being baptized today either. But, but as you've done some people watching, you, you know that it's a next step for you. Right? Baptism is that step of obedience that, that we take after trusting in Christ. In Matthew chapter 28, Jesus is talking to his followers, and he sends them out. He says, hey, listen, go make disciples. Go tell people about me. Get them to believe in me. And when they do, he says, baptize them. Right? It's a command of Jesus, and not only did Jesus command it, Jesus lived it out. Right? He was the model for us by being baptized himself. Listen, it's this spiritual marker that we get to hold on to in our lives. And, and if you've never been baptized before and you're a follower of Jesus, look back at verse 36 in your Bible. Acts chapter 8, verse 36. The guy said, here's water. What's stopping me from being baptized? And this morning, I'd love to invite you to, to watch what we see right here in Acts 8 and in the same way, walk it out. Do what Jesus has told us to do and be baptized. Right? When we take that step of faith, of obedience, we are publicly identifying with Jesus, just like this man here. We're letting people know that, that Jesus has changed us. We're letting people know that Jesus has saved us and brought us into the family. But we know and understand that the step of baptism is not what saves us, right? It is a public declaration of what Jesus has already done in our hearts and in our lives. And, and what we see here with this Ethiopian official, we see all the way throughout the book of Acts, right? There's this pattern of people that trust Christ and then make it public by going forward in baptism. In Acts chapter 2, this crowd of people hears a sermon and they respond to it and they say, what do we do next? And Peter says, trust Christ and be baptized. And that day, thousands were. In Acts chapter 9, Paul, the, the one that we'll look at as the great missionary later in Acts, he trusts Christ, and the Bible says immediately he's baptized. In Acts 16, Lydia and her family encounter believers. They're down by the river, and they trust Christ, and immediately Lydia and her entire family is baptized. In Acts 16 later, there's this Philippian jailer, and in the middle of the night, right, he's led to Christ by some of the apostles. Right then and there, his family trusts in Christ as well, and I love what it says in the text. It says that that same hour of the night, that same hour of the night, they didn't put it off, they were baptized. Listen, this is just a few examples of many in the book of Acts, right? but they give us a pattern. that they, they, they follow what Jesus said, they trust in him, and then they are baptized, right? It's a beautiful picture of what God has done. It tells the church that, that you belong to the family. And so like I said up front, this morning we're going to do something that, that's a little bit out of the ordinary, right? We're going to invite you to get baptized, not, not next week or in a few weeks. We're going to invite you to get baptized this morning, just like we see here. So if you're a follower of Christ and, and you have not taken that step, or if you came here and searched of truth, and you now know that Jesus is the way, he is the truth, he is life. You know that, that the only way to the Father is through Christ, and you want to trust him and get baptized today. We want to invite you to do that. And let me just say, you won't be the only one. Lewis has already told us there's several that are planning to get baptized. So this will be a time where you can celebrate with other people. And if that's you, don't let anything hold you back. This man in the chariot, he saw water, he followed Jesus in baptism. We've got water you can see it. Follow Jesus and baptism. We've got the clothes, the towels, even the hair dryers, everything you need to follow through in that step this morning. And here's the deal. All right, if you're thinking, man, you know what? I know that I need to, but I've been around here for a while. All right, what are people going to think if, if I go forward and get baptized? I'll tell you what they're going to think. Right? They're going to cheer you on as loud as they can, excited, rejoicing with you about what God has done in your heart. Maybe you were baptized when you were younger, right, before you trusted Christ. That's my story. 
Right? I was baptized before I fully understood what it meant. When I was a little older, I trusted in Christ as my Lord and as my Savior, and I was baptized after trusting in Jesus. And, and maybe that's you, right? And you're in a place now where you know it's time. And if that's the case, we'd love to celebrate with you today. Look back at verse 39. That's what happens here. Verse 39, where we're still people watching, right? We see Philip, we see the eunuch, we see the baptism happen. God takes Philip somewhere else, right? Philip's got to follow God, go where God calls him. He's going to repeat this process throughout the course of his life. But that eunuch, man, he would never be the same. In verse 39, it says that he went on his way rejoicing, right? And I promise you that, that that's what happens when we follow Jesus. If you trust him and follow him this morning, as you follow him every day of your life, you're going to be able to go on rejoicing, right? God speaks to us through the lives of these two people, right? And, and no matter who we are in here, I, I think that we can look, we can identify, and we can respond to what God says. For some of us, we've been walking with Jesus for a little while, like Philip was, and we're at a place where, where we, need to, we need to put some feet to our faith. We're at a place where we need to follow God day in and day out, engage the people that he's placed around us, and be willing to share Jesus. Listen, if Philip doesn't engage, if Philip doesn't share Jesus, that Ethiopian goes on his way, and we never know if he trusts Christ. Listen, there's people that God places in our path every single day, right? Like Philip, we've got to be willing to engage, and we've got to be willing to share. All right, but for some of us, maybe we identify with the man in the chariot. Right? We're, we're in search of truth. We're wondering right, what that next step for us is. We're wondering what we're doing in this life. And man, if that's us, I want to encourage you to learn from what we see here by, by this Ethiopian. And first and foremost, let's make sure that, that we're solid in our relationship with Christ. Let's make sure that we've trusted in him as our Lord and Savior. Heard a great story from one of our life group leaders this week that, that met a new person in their class and, and went out to eat with them Monday night in the middle of a restaurant watching Monday night football. This man prays to receive Jesus as his Lord and Savior. He was in search of truth. He found it in Jesus and he prayed and trusted Christ and he's going to follow through with baptism here in a little bit. So maybe we need to trust Christ this morning. Maybe you need to be baptized this morning. And, and here's the thing. Right? That, that's not the end of the road for us. Right? That's just the beginning. When we trust Christ and step into a relationship with him, when we identify with him publicly through baptism, then we circle back around and we begin living like Philip. Right? We're, we're called to follow God. We're called to engage people. And we're called to share Jesus wherever he sends us. I, I love this passage. Right? Philip, living his life for Jesus, God leads him to a man in search of truth. The man responded. He was baptized Never the same, all for the glory of God. So here's my final encouragement this morning. Let's not just watch these guys. Let's not just hear about their story. Right? Let's be willing to live it out. Let's watch, let's learn, and let's live it out day by day. Would you pray with me? This morning, just as, as your head's bowed, your eyes are closed, I'm going to tell you what, what's going to happen next. In right, just a second, after I lead us in a time of prayer, right, if, if you're ready to trust Christ this morning, if you're ready to be baptized this morning, when we stand for worship, I want to encourage you just to move. I'll point you to the right direction, to, to a door right over on the side. We're going to go backstage, and we're going to get you ready to be baptized. Right, it's going to be an exciting, exciting morning. But, but here's the thing. Right? Just thinking about these two guys, as your head's bowed, as you're praying, don't just be listening to me. If, if you're a follower of Jesus, I want to encourage you this morning to pray and, and to commit to live our lives intentionally. I want you to pray and, and ask God that to help you to live out the model that he gives you in Philip's life. Say, God, just help me to follow you day in and day out. God, help me to engage the people that you've placed around me. God, help me to open my mouth and to share the good news of Jesus with the people you bring to me. Pray that this morning. And then for those of us that want to identify maybe more with the man in the chariot, who would look in this story and say, you know what, I'm the guy that's sitting there and, and I didn't really understand what was going on. Maybe your decision this morning, your response to, to what God has shown us in his word, maybe you need to trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. 
Listen, I think four right here did, did that just this past week, right? God, God's moving, God's stirring, God's knocking on hearts. And if he's speaking to you this morning, don't ignore him, right? Lean in. Lean in and engage Jesus. This morning, if that's you, in just a minute, I'm going to ask you to, to come talk to one of our prayer partners over there and say, I'm ready to trust in Christ. All right? For some this morning, you see this guy get baptized immediately after following Jesus, and you're thinking, you know what? I've been putting that off. That's my next step. All right? I'm going to take that step of obedience today and follow Christ in baptism. If that's you, in just a second when we stand, I want to invite you to head on over to that door as well, and, and we're going to baptize you. Listen. We've got everything that you need. We've got the clothes. We've got the towels. We've got the stuff. So listen, if that's you, be willing to step out. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, if God's knocking on your heart this morning, calling you to make that profession of faith public, I want to encourage you to follow him. Students, kiddos, lean over to your parents and say, hey, I think this is me, mom. I think this is me, dad. If that's the case, they'll walk with you. Right? They'll show you everything that you need to see. I'll be back there. Can't wait to celebrate with you. God, we love you. We trust you. And God, I pray that every single one of us this morning would respond to what you're calling us to do. God, I pray that, that we'd be a people that follow you. God, not just Sunday morning. God, but, but every day of our lives. God, help us to follow you. Help us to engage the people that you bring our way, and God, Lord, help us to open our mouth and, and point people to the greatest news we've ever known, a relationship with you. And God, I pray for those of us that are sitting here this morning that, that are sort of stern in our hearts right now, God, wondering, man, am I going to go? Am I not going to go? Am I going to trust Christ this morning? Am I going to be baptized? God, I pray that for those of us that are thinking that right now, God, give us the boldness and the courage to respond just like this man in the chariot to the truth that we know. God, help us to respond in obedience to what you've called us for. And God, help us when we leave here today to go on our way rejoicing. God, we love you, we trust you, and we thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us online. We hope today's experience encouraged and challenged you. At Champion Forest, we are passionate about all kinds of people coming to know God to grow in their relationship with Him and others, and then to go out and make a difference in the world. We would love the opportunity to talk and pray with you. To connect with us, just go to championforce.org connect. And hey, of course, we can't wait to welcome you on campus, in person, on one of our locations. We'll see you soon.